Uh, but this is supposed to be kind of like an overall view of like, what is D&D? How do you play it? There is nothing wrong with the way that you want to play Dungeons and Dragons. How's it going, everybody? Uh, today we're doing a little bit different of a video. Um, I was talking with some of my uh, <coughs> friends and associates in real life about Dungeons and Dragons in my channel here making a, I guess, tutorial series or like a a play-by-play -play illustrating the way in which I create Dungeons & Dragons worlds. And uh, some of them don't quite understand Dungeons & Dragons in general. And I was like, hmm, you know, that that might not be a bad thing to create a little video about. So that's, that's gonna be this week's video, obviously, hence the title. What is Dungeons & Dragons and how do you play it? On the screen here, I've got pulled up uh, just, you know, this is what you would do if, I'm assuming, if someone's like, what's Dungeons and Dragons? Go to the Wikipedia, pull it up, and you can see, you know, it's got like, you know, the history of it, first published in 1974, blah, blah, blah. It's got like all the publication dates, the different versions and everything. And then you're like, oh, well, maybe I'm just going to, you know, like play overview. It tells you how to play it. And it's like a, the game mechanics, adventures, campaigns, miniature figures, like, like this is a lot of pointless information here if you're trying to learn how to play Dungeons and Dragons. The most important things I think are what you can do and how you play. Easiest way to say what can you do is everything. Though saying you can do everything when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons isn't very helpful. The easiest way that I have to equate it with people who understand video games, who know video games, is like, you know, open take take an open world video game example, usually something that a lot of people have played, you know, Skyrim, uh, the, the newer Fallout series, things like that, where you can just run around and do stuff like, okay, now take that game and imagine you can literally do anything. Like, not like, you know, you're, you're Superman where you can, you know, fly and do whatever, but like, there are no story constraints on what you do there are no invisible walls that keep you within a certain map you know dungeons and dragons is the ultimate sandbox game obviously the the dungeon master has created stories and also some dungeon masters aren't as comfortable with just letting things go wild and off the rails air quotes uh as as others are so you know you can go and do basically whatever you want, but what does that what does that really mean? So uh, I'll give kind of a little example, right? So generally with my campaigns, as you saw in a previous video, um, where I was talking about uh, railroading sessions, and particularly the very beginning of this world or campaign I'm creating, uh, is going to be railroad. So that is when your players do not have the freedom to go and do whatever they want. So at the beginning of my stories they will be forced to be together in one spot just so that everybody is together. Why is it so important that you can do whatever you want in D&D? Being able to do whatever you want in D&D is just one aspect that attracts a lot of people to it. Obviously, it's nice to have that freedom to be like, well, I'm not constrained by a games a video games mechanics or storyline to do, you know, where I couldn't just do X, Y, and Z. Like, you know, um, you couldn't just, you can't just walk away from the main storyline in a video game where technically speaking, you could just walk away from the main storyline in Dungeons and Dragons. Obviously it, it would take a certain DM to be able to do that, to, you know, kind of uh, improvise and create a new adventure for you of your character's choosing, but you can do that. That's just one of the things that brings people to D&D. Another thing that, that people really like is the role playing aspect. So so that is that goes into what is D&D. Dungeons and Dragons or D&D is a tabletop role playing game. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, tabletop traditionally played on a tabletop. So literally sitting at a table with a group of people, usually friends, playing the game on the tabletop RPG role playing game. So you are playing a role. So your role is your character includes the role playing as in you role play your character. And now that defining the word with the word itself obviously is not very helpful. But what that means is where you speak as your character. So like you're almost like players in a play, right? So if you've ever been a play, you are role playing that character because you are emoting as that character. I think it's best. Um, the best parallel is um, is improvisational like plays or Im improv just in general. You're still playing a character in improv, 
like your character has certain things that you know about them they have desires they have wants um and it's just like that for a character in dungeons and dragons so you create a character in your mind and on paper your character sheet what your character acts like what they want what they look like and then you immerse yourself in that character not everybody speaks as their character at the table it's something that generally takes some time to get comfortable with but that is one of the many things that people enjoy about dungeons and dragons <clears throat> obviously there's also combat some people just love the numbers mechanics the tactics of it because it is traditionally played on a grid so you can see that on this if i zoom in here you can see on this map that I created in our last episode, there are these small squares here. So it's a grid combat. So um, numerically, your character is able to move numeric number of squares, affect a certain number of areas, so on and so forth. So so gridded combat is another thing which lead, lends to tactical gameplay. Disclaimer, not all DMs run combat on grid. When I'm playing in person, uh, on a tabletop, I generally don't do grid. I do measurements instead of a grid so it has a more fluid feel. But this I'm creating for an online play and obviously I'm going to be doing grids there because I don't, you know, it, it just it's it's much simpler for the game mechanism or the uh the the engine that I'm running online. We got what is D&D? &D? Uh, how do you play? We'll kind of go step by step on how you play. The first thing you do is you create a character. Generally, this takes quite a bit of time, particularly if you're unfamiliar with D&D. I could tell you the specific mechanics of how you make a character, but that's, I mean, you can find that in the rule books. You know, you roll your stats, you know, you, this stat does that, you know, your strength is strength, constitution is, you know, how tough you are dexterity how quick you are wisdom intelligence charisma like those things are are numbers that you can understand but like that you or excuse me those things are numbers that you can kind of investigate they all make sense and um if we want to if, if people seem to be interested in this we can go into a deep dive step by step of how to make different types of characters we could do that on this channel and that's totally fine uh, but this is supposed to be kind of like an overall view of like what is D, &D how do you play it and kind of muddy terms if that makes sense we're not going super specific on it so you're going to create a character you're going to choose their race you're or, um i like i i want to start using what matt colville calls race as ancestry i like that it, it has a better connotation to it i'm still going to slip up and say race a lot um just because it's i've been playing DD for so long and that's what they've always called it but i love the idea of calling it ancestry it doesn't have um I don't know that negative feel so uh you choose your ancestry so you know if you're a human an elf an orc uh you know a tiefling a, a a dwarf and then you choose your class now classes are outlined in the player's handbook um which you which you can get you can look at there's fighters there's you know druids monks barbarians um, each of them has special things that they can do talk to your dungeon master or a friend who's familiar with it if you're just kind of trying to figure it out um figure out what it is i mean obviously there's going to be a lot of people who are like oh mechanically speaking numbers wise this is going to be your best bet you know this is like this is going to be like number wise the the best mechanical combat character while that is true that can happen you know i mean that is easy to figure out what numbers wise is the best character personally i'm not a fan of that we call that uh min maxing in dungeons and dragons it's not a thing i'm a fan of some people enjoy doing it and playing DD like that and that's totally fine there's nothing wrong with that you play DD how you like and that that's actually probably one of the most important things is there is nothing wrong with the way that you want to play dungeons and dragons you can play it to be completely peaceful you can play it with absolutely no combat at all you can play it entirely with combat you can play it specifically for puzzles you can play it specifically to navigate different socio-economic roles in the world dungeons and dragons is a big huge sandbox and you can do in it whatever you want that's what people love about it but yeah, in D&D, you can play whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can play however you want, and none of that is wrong. An important thing to note, though, I, I say that so much, an important thing to note. Uh, <laughs> uh, an important thing to note, though, 
is um, you're not always going to find a group of players in Dungeon Master that mesh with your desired playstyle. And there's nothing wrong with going into a game and you know you're like super excited you like especially say hey you, you like you're learned what dungeons and dragons is you're like i'm gonna make this character they're gonna be so fun because this this and this and i'm so excited to play it and then the person is like who's running the game the dungeon master is gonna tell you like no you can't do that that doesn't fit in my world or they're like oh well we're gonna change this and this and it's okay to be like hey you know um this doesn't really fit with what I was wanting to play, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass. You know, it, 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 it's there's nothing wrong with wanting to play differently than other people are. So, you know, feel feel secure and feel secure in your comfort and your ability to say you don't want to play that type of game. And now I'm saying backstory element. What is a backstory element? When you're creating a character, you create the person and you kind of roughly create the life around them so you're not just creating a single character and just dropping it into the world that the dm has created you you can create like a family around them you can say okay i want you know i'm making this um this human ranger who was a uh, you know lived in a small village and he was a hunter i'm just going super basic here and then my family i had you know i don't know you would be like, I had three siblings, two brothers and a sister. And then my uh, father died hunting when I was 13. And I have all my siblings are younger than me. You know what I mean? You're kind of creating this world. When you create this, you don't want to be hyper specific. You want to, I mean, have some specific details, you know, be like, my father's name is this. My mother's name is this. Um, or and you could you could also leave that up. I mean, I would probably know your father's mother name and your and your siblings names. But you don't want to be crazy specific. You don't want to be like, and then when I was eight year old, my neighbor, Franklin, who lived two houses down, you know what I mean? Like you, you want to create certain points that define your character in their backstory. And then you have the dungeon master kind of create the rest of the world around them. So what I, in my instance, you know, say I'm like, okay, I was a hunter. My, my father died when I was younger. Um, I've been kind of hunting to or since then I was hunting to keep food on the table and, and pelts, you know, to sell. And now my uh, two brothers are old enough to do that. And I'm going to go um, find out what happened to my father because it was uh, one of the local nobles hired him to hunt this beast because he's a renowned hunter and then he hasn't been back since. So now I'm going out on an adventure to find what happened to my father. Boom, there's a backstory, right? It's a very simple backstory. But and then the DM can be like, OK, 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 OK. So this is the town that you lived in. I'm going to be like, you lived in Ardenbell, whatever. I don't know if that name just came from a video game. Sorry if it did. It just popped into my head. You lived in Ardenbell and you hunted dire wolves or whatever. Uh, probably not dire wolves, wolves or, you know, something else. Wolves or bears, you know, for their pelts and, you know, their claws and their bones and stuff like that. And then you traded them and, and you hung, hunted elk for meat, probably, you know, and, you know, tanned leather, blah, 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 blah. So then you live there and you live kind of near this forest. A lot of people, maybe as a DM, I'm saying that uh, the forest is supposedly cursed, but your family knows a few areas that you're able to safely go into that you can still hunt within. And it's a family secret, right? I don't know. I, and then the local lord, Stevenson decided that he was going to hire your father to, to hunt a, a, a particular wolf that was attacking caravans further to the north that the forest, you know, went on and he knows your knows your father knows the forest better than anybody else. And then that's what you know about it. And then that's what I can tell them as the DM. And then me as the DM, I can be like, OK, so maybe what they did was uh, I always go towards nefarious. I always like it. That's one of the things I do in my mind is like, OK, what nefarious thing can I make? So maybe what they did was used him to uh, maybe it was a um, a royal member who was cursed or something, and they actually used him to bait this cursed person into a trap. And then their their father died in the meantime. But like they're using it now, they're experimenting on this, or maybe it wasn't even noble, but just this, it was someone who was cursed and they knew this and they used your, your father to lure him into a trap. And now they're experimenting with it to try and recreate the curse so they can 
and control the the cursed people so they can create armies that'll take down the nearby baron and steal his land right so there i've taken someone's backstory and i've taken a few elements and then i've created a hook for it um and that's what we call when when you um when you create things like that we call them story hooks you know so that that character in their background has a single plot hook now don't center or excuse me now don't expect a campaign to be centered around your one character's backstory and their plot hook because there's going to be an overarching plot in that world of what's happening and then your character has a story over here but every other character also has a story so the dm generally speaking will be getting into each of these stories as they go along so how do you play DD? traditionally uh the way i've played every single game so far has been at a tabletop with dice character sheets with numbers and most of the time a battle board laid out um i have down here some some battle mats you lay them out you put miniature stuff on it you have terrain stuff that you put on it um and then you have character miniatures that that exist in that world um, online, you can also play online, you have something like this, like that I have here, um, which is a gridded combat thing, and then you'll have little tokens that represent each character, just like a little circle that's, that's, that's laid down there. And then you can play online through various programs. You could play um, through like Fantasy Grounds, you can play Roll20. You can also play what we call Theater of the Mind, which is how I played Dungeons & Dragons when I first started, which is no battle map at all, 100% in your imagination. You just roll for attacks, roll for skill checks and stuff like that and there's just no maps and there's nothing wrong with playing that way either particularly online if you don't want to spend time in making maps like this or learning a uh, a system like learning how to run like fantasy grounds it's totally fine to just just play just 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 play in theater of mind and everybody be on a discord voice channel or something like that and just talking that's completely fine and that's how some people play now if you're interested in more specifics on this, or if you're interested in me going over more how to play or how to create characters, how to make characters with interesting backstories or how to create a good backstory for hooks or DMs, if you're like, hey, how can I take this hook and or take this character's backstory and turn it into a hook? Um, let me know in the comments below. This is supposed to be just a real short video kind of explaining the rough details of Dungeons and Dragons. So real quick, generally, uh, there's a small handful of people at the table. There's the dungeon master, and then there's the players. Typically, you'll have a party of three to six players. There's no specific rule, but um, like as a DM, generally, I like to have at least four players. I've run for less. I've run with two players before. I like to have four, four to five players specifically. Um, I've run for more as well, but that's my ideal number. So you'll have, you know, the dungeon master, the person who's telling the story, and then you have the 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 players, the other players, yourself included, people who are playing a character within that story. So as the dungeon master, me, I am creating every what we call NPC, non-player character. So every single person, monster, object you interact with that is not one of the other players at that table is run by the dungeon master. It's me in this example so if you're saying like if you're traveling down the road and your character is for some reason suspicious of a bandit ambush right you're like i want to see if there's a bandit group gonna ambush us i would say okay um make a what we say check a perception check which is a skill that you have on your character sheet if you look over here i have a, a basic character sheet pulled up just Googled it real fast. So if you see right down here, it says perception. It's pretty small, but it says perception. It's got a little dot, little blank space, and it has a in in parenthesis right next to it, which pro probably hard to see. It's W I S, which means wisdom. So perception is a wisdom based skill. Um, and it and then I say make a perception check. You're going to take a twenty sided dice. You're going to roll it, and then you're going to tell or you then you're going to say say it says. 13 when you roll it you know you roll it you get a 13 then you're going to add whatever you you have here on your character sheet so say it says plus four here right so it says thir I, think, I think i said you rolled a 13 so you roll the 13 plus four so that means your total check is 17 and then me as the dm i say 
hmm, is a 17 high enough to see if there is a bandit. Combat is done, like I said, generally speaking, on a grid. Doesn't have to be. So generally speaking, there's going to be a grid. Uh, each grid can hold one character. Each grid is about five feet. So, you know, you can occupy a space of five feet around you. And then you would say you'd have a character here, here, and here. And then that would be, you know, you block out the entrance to this door. Whatever. Right? That's it's just kind of like a rough description of, of how you run it. And you react. All you do is you, you, your character interacts with and reacts with the world that the dungeon master creates. That's basically it. I mean... There can be, and you can have all sorts of different types of worlds, encounters, adventures, just all sorts of things. You can have, like one of my favorite things to do is in the world, I start off in one direction and we go in different directions. So we say we start off as prisoners, or I say I, I have the character start off as prisoners, right? Later on when they're higher level, which by the way, you gain levels, so your character gets more powerful as you play. Later, they're in some political court. And I don't mean literal court, like, you know, your guilty court. I mean, like, they're in a, a, there's a political thing, like an event that they're going to, and they have to maneuver politically to ensure that they get support for X, Y, or Z. You know what I mean? They have to play the political game. They have to talk to the, the barons, the, the dukes, the, you know, all of that, you know, they have to deal with all these political people and try and do political dealings instead of just fighting dragons, you know? So, like, you can have so many different things, so many fun things, so many silly things with D&D, like, and it's appropriate for all ages, you know? Um, for younger people, I create, generally speaking, a very cut and dry monsters, you're saving the town from monsters type of thing evil skeletons and necromancers you know what i mean like you create a very bland thing but for for more mature players and especially for more um experienced players i create a very or i try to i should say create a very nuanced game with you know political intrigue and, and stuff like that um yeah so that is that's our little primer on what is D, &D how do you play it it's whatever you want if you have any questions pop them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. If you have any thoughts, like you'd like to hear me explain certain things more specifically, let me know. This is kind of just an off, off the top of the head, little description primer for people who are interested in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm sure I missed plenty of things, glossed over other things that I'm... It, one of the issues is with people like myself who have played Dungeons and Dragons for so long, if somebody asks me what it is, I really don't know where to start because it's part of me. I've played Dungeons and Dragons for over half of my life, well over half of my life. So if when people ask me what it is, I'm like, well, you, I go into all these specific things. I, and I don't know if that's helpful or not. So please in the comments below, let me know. Let me know if there are specific things you'd like me to go into. If you'd like me to go into like, what uh, like what are these stats that you're talking about? You know, how do, what are these roles? What do you, what do you, you know what I mean? If you have specific questions, please let me know. I will make a video. I will get into them. Thank you all for watching, hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Also, I'm doing, um, if you look down below, there is a link to my TikTok. If you have a TikTok, I'm creating short little DM tip videos. Just, you know, just real tiny little bite-sized things. Check it out, like them. I'd appreciate that and help me get out to more people. I'm also probably going to be doing player tips or just game tips in general. So thanks all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with some more random D&D stuff.